gentlemen welcome to our next tutorial video today we're going to be going over the arc 170 or the aggressive reconnaissance 170 starfighter uh, so this vehicle was made by the incom corporation and subpro corporation it was a linked project uh, it is a class starfighter it is 12.71 meters uh, in length and almost 20 meters wide with the wingspan uh, but to be more precise, it's, it's about 19.85. It is 3.81 metres high. Uh, and again, it's got this silly weight of 100 MGLT. I'd like someone to explain what MGLT is. Mass, mass, gross, something, I don't know. Uh, maximum airspeed of 1,050 kilometres per hour. It has two engines. Uh, it has a class 1.5 hyperdrive. Doesn't need much more than that. It's not very heavy. Uh, it has a sensor system equipped. It has two large bugger off laser cannons. These are very, very good at suppressing both starfighters and ground uh, assets, I guess. Uh, it has two aft laser cannons, which are these two at the back here. It has a proton torpedo launcher and the version we're using today, once again, it is a community mod, which means I have GBUs. Uh, a normal ARC-170 does not carry GBUs, but uh, this one does. Now, uh, this actually has a three-pilot system. It has a pilot that sits around here, co-pilot sits here, and a rear gunner. Uh, it also has an astromech here, as you can see, that makes this... Uh, look, it's the fighter that, that was the precursor to the X-Wing, uh, and the Z-95 too, I believe. It's a uh, mainly used for recon roles, but could hold its own in a dogfight and keep taking down larger frigates. Now the system here it's got here is an S-foil system. So these wings here would open up to help dissipate heat. Uh, because this had so many systems in it and was so small, uh, the biggest problem that this had, as well as the X-Wing had, was it had so many systems in such a confined space it had no way to get rid of the heat. And so these wings would open up to help dissipate that heat. Um, yeah. It was a, a pretty good ship, mainly used as a uh, snub fighter, or, or yeah, it, it could be used as a bomber, but that's that wasn't its main role. Um, so let's have a look at the other systems. That's pretty. Looks nice and badass there. All right, let's start at the back and work our way around. Welcome to the rear gunner seat. So it's, uh, as you can see, thermal imaging once again. It's a very basic seat back here, but um, yeah. Pretty good gun at the back. Very responsive. Uh, you know, thermal imaging. You can zoom in if you need to. Um, different types of vision. Very handy. Uh, that's probably all I can show you with the back turret. There's not much about it. You're a rear gunner. That's what you do. It's a very detailed model. The people who made these models did a very good job. So this is the navigator seat. Now, navigator has a few roles. The navigator's role is to, one, uh, uh, watch the radar and things like that when they come up. Uh, keep visual scanning up. You've got a very good field of view up here. Uh, the other thing you can do is actually fly the ship. Uh, you can take control of the vehicle from here, as you can see. Um, I don't recommend it. You can do it. I don't recommend it. Because you won't have access to things like countermeasure th uh, countermeasures and things like that. But, um, yeah, the main role of this was to... Um, that's just the view from underneath, so you can actually get a good scan underneath. Uh, you, you were the uh, reconnaissance if you were sitting here. Your job was to report, uh, hence why you did communications and things like that. All right, into the pilot seat. Again, it's a wonderful looking cockpit. Blind spots here with the engines. So you do need to be careful when flying. These are rather big blind spots. Uh, but having a nice open cockpit like this means you can track your target quite easily. However, it does leave you open to attack if you're moving head on. Uh, so, you know, we've got the usual, we've got the radar. We turn off the auto vectoring and we increase, uh, well, with this one you don't have to increase, it's already set to the maximum, which is where it should be. We 
turn this engine on. And what you can actually hear is there's a bit of rotary uh, systems going on in place here. There's a turbine that sucks in the coal there, it mixes it with the fuel and pops it out out the back and gives it that nice beautiful red glow. So that's how these work, works with a rotary system. So generally, um, for the sake, if you've got a co-pilot or someone like that who's sitting behind you with a better field of view, because you can't see very well in front of these wings here, it's their job to tell you what they see, they sit higher up, so you would say clear prop, they would say contact, and you would start the engine. That's how it would work, you don't want anyone getting sucked in or hurt. Alright, this is pretty much the same as the Y-Wing in terms of takeoff. You want to keep your throttle around 75, 85 in that, that sort of range, you fluctuate it. Uh, so let's get this bad boy rolling out. We're going to take off to the right today, a bit more of a challenge. Get the gear up, rotate it around. We put the nose down and off we go. Now, when when you're uh, taking the vectoring off, you will lose altitude. That's only natural. So you want to do it nice and slow in these. So as you can see, the climb doesn't sell. You just drop the nose a little bit more. Once you're at about not 200 like this, you can take the vectoring all the way off because you, you'll have enough speed. As you can see, it's a very good looking model. Um, I guess I can show you what she does. This is probably the best handling Republic ship. No problems with this one. Um, you can generally keep the throttle jammed at 100 and you'll have more than enough. Um, she can fly inverted quite well. Do a bit of a top gun thing. Um, and, and the three man crew communication is key. Uh, talking to each other, making sure you all know what each other's doing. Um, there is a bit going on at the front here, so it is valuable to have someone in the back who can handle communications for you with the long range radio if they can. Yeah, not much really to go on about this. It's a it's a fighter. Uh, to open the S foils, it's quite simple. Just wheel mouse. You see the open S foils, and that's it. And there she is in all her glory. It's beautiful. Uh, probably one of the best starfighters the Republic ever produced. Uh, it's well armoured, well shielded. It's just very good all round. Now where you will have trouble is dogfighting a Vulture Droid. A Vulture Droid is lighter armoured than you and has better thrusters, so therefore it's going to outrun you. So you need to watch your throttle and, and how you do things. Um, I will do a video on dogfighting and I'll probably take an arc out. Um, probably do it with a full squad though, so you can actually hear the communication between all three of us. Uh, we'll do a two versus one, so just so it's more interesting. Um, it's generally pretty accurate. What'll end up happening is when you lock onto a target, or create a, a little square around the target, and you line up, there's a little uh, crosshair above the W there, you line that up with like a rectangle, and you hold the trigger. That's pretty much it. Alright, so let's put this bird away. Take the throttle off and polish off some speed. Close our S foils. We'll make our way in. So I'm using the air brake again here. I'll increase the vectoring. Now we're slowing down. I'll so you can see if I pitch the nose too quickly, that's a good point. If I just go and pitch the nose, look at the rate of climb. That puts us in a lot of trouble with things. So I'd rather not do that if you don't have to. Just do it gently. Do it gentle, nice and slow. And then you'll be able to handle it. So I'd rather not do the pitch like that, uh, where it's avoidable. Now, I will point out, um, I'm the only one on the server at the moment. Don't ever enter the hangar um, without permission. Make sure the flight deck is clear. You don't want to be flying in and then have a lap try and take off as you're entering. Um, communication is key. So 
when we go with the gear down. So that's flying an ARC 170, not much to it than that. So yeah, Craig is signing out.